So this is the Parrot AR Drone 2.0. This is actually the Elite Edition. There's a couple different editions. Not exactly sure what the differences are. It's about a $300 consumer remote controlled drone that you can buy. It's a quadcopter, has four blades, and a computer inside that keeps it stationary and uh, does a really good job of flying it. It's got an HD camera on the front. Very cool. You can uh, control it from an iPad, iPhone, Android device, etc. Or if you go over here to their uh, open API platform, you can get their uh, developer guide. Uh, you don't need to take a look at their SDK. Uh, the developer guide is not 100% accurate. I found there's a couple things that at least I maybe I misunderstood it, but it didn't seem like it explained exactly the way the uh, application works. One note about the AR drone is it actually runs Android on the AR drone itself, but it's not designed for you to run your own applications on the AR drone on Android. So by that definition, it would be a gadget because it's controlled from another device. Okay, so let's take a look at a simple app I wrote here in uh, Delphi XC5. This could be written in C++ Builder, but I wanted to be able to run it on my Android device. Uh, basically, so this is the controller app itself, very crude UI, um, but it, I encapsulated all the control into this, cl this class here, this TAR drone. Now what this does, it uses the Indie UDP client in order to make a UDP connection and send UDP messages to the AR drone. That's the way you control AR drones, through UDP. Actually, there's some TCP in there as well, I believe, but everything I'm doing right now is through UDP. One note about the architecture, the AR drone actually has an access point in it. So what that means is when you turn it on, you find that AR drone's access point and connect to it. And so you are just connected to that AR drone. You're not connected to the internet while doing it. Um, so I, I put some things in here trying to make some simple procedures to do common things, but uh, they require some fine tuning. So I'm gonna show you this, actually let's show you uh, takeoff. So takeoff, all the commands have uh, this format where there's this AT asterisk and then the type of command. So here's a config, a PCMD, which is for movement and reference, which is for uh, specific tasks like takeoff, landing, emergency landing. And then it has arguments. Now the first argument's always a sequence number. And so if you go to look at sin command here, the first thing we're doing is we have the sequence number that we're incrementing each time. And so the first, um, so we get the command, which is this first string here. And then we get the equals and we have a sequence number right here, sequence number. And then we have the arguments, whatever arguments are passed to it. So like these movement ones have multiple arguments coming into them. The uh, takeoff and landing, here's takeoff, just has a single argument that comes into it. Okay, so we combine that all together with a carriage return, number 13. The documentation says ASCII 10. So that took me a while to figure that one out, that it was actually uh, ASCII 13. And I'll show you the connection here. I skipped that part. All right, so here's where we're creating our UDP client. And this is the IP address of the drone because the drone is the access point. It's the always going to have this IP address. So uh, that we know that's what it's going to be. And the documentation lists a few different UDP ports. I thought it said UDP port 5554 for sending these commands, but it's actually 5556. Um, so I think the documentation is a little out of date. I'm not sure, or I could have just read it wrong. And then we initialize our sequence at one. So, um, so land, like I said, is just like takeoff. It has, it's this command, AT ref, and then it has this number here. Now one note about the, actually, so this movement here, these are the, if you consult the documentation, it tells you what all these mean, phi, theta, gauss, and yaw, what they all mean. Uh, this is up and down. Um, I can't remember what the rest of them are. But they're floating point numbers, they're singles. Now, the way it wants the singles, the floating point numbers encoded is kind of odd. And so they said, according to the IEEE yada, yada, yada spec, this is what it looks like in memory. So just display it as an integer instead of a float. So a single is a four byte floating point number. And so basically I'm just converting that into an integer with this IEEE float. 
routine. And what that's using internally is a variant record. And so that variant record has either got a float or an integer, so a single or an integer, that are both four bytes, so they're using the same memory because it's a variant record. And so I put it in as a float and get it out as an integer, and that gives it the number in the format it's looking for. Kind of bizarre. It might make sense to uh, somebody, but it seemed like an odd thing to me. So the angular speed just takes the yaw, which is this value here, and sets everything else to zero. Um, and then there's another one here for, uh, there's a configuration one. Uh, so it's unlimited altitude, which sets the uh, configuration on it. The altitude max to 10,000, which according to documentation means unlimited. Um, I couldn't find out what units that in. So uh, that's something I wanted to look into a little bit more. And then I have restrict altitude where you can set it between a value of five and 5,000, which is what it says you should use for restricting it. So anyway, that's where this is at. This is in, has double quotes around the string values here for these, for configuration ones. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So it's just a matter of sending these strings with the command and the arguments. And then there is a, like I said, there's a sequence number that comes between the command and the argument in the way it's formatted, carriage return at the end through UDP port. And once you send those to the AR drone, it will do what you tell it to do. One note is if you've previously controlled your AR drone with one of their apps that they give you for your iPad, for example, then it pairs the AR drone to that iPad. And so you can't control it from other devices, whether it be your desktop or this app you're writing yourself. So you'll need to make sure you reset it and so you have to open it up. And the documentation shows an unpair button and a reset button. I didn't have that, I just had a reset button. So you have to hit the reset button, unless you have an unpair button, which resets it. Um, you also wanna make sure that the lights are all green and that you actually received an IP address from the AR drone. If all those things are done, you reset it, lights are green, you received an IP address from the AR drone's access point, then this application should run just fine. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you this probably just like you see it right now. I'm kinda was, uh, wasn't really clear on front and back angle if that's what theta is controlling or not. So I kinda guessed and then I, like I said, I have some uh, ones here that are pitch up, pitch down. And these are just moving at a very small increment. I think it's uh, 0.1, which converted to the crazy looking integer is this is negative 0.1 and this is positive point no that's land this is positive so positive 0.1 negative one right there or negative 0.1 are those values there so it's very small increments just to kind of experiment with it i wasn't having any luck getting it to behave exactly right i might need to bump those into larger increments um, or you could use move here to give it exactly the measurements you want to have it move on those different axes. So you have, uh, you tip it forward, you can rotate it, you can tip it to the left, tip it to the right, and go up and down. And I just, I don't remember exactly which one of those line up. The documentation tries to explain it to me, but I was too busy trying to make it work to bother reading everything. So anyway, here it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. So there's my AR drone. Here's my Nexus 10. First thing I do is go into settings, Wi-Fi. And I want to find Rad AR Drone, which is what I renamed it to, and make sure I'm connected to that, which in this case I am. Now I'm not sure if you're going to see it or not, but it's important to make sure that you have green LEDs on. You can't really see it from the single, but the LEDs on the AR Drone have to be green. If they're not green, you're not going to be able to connect to it. And also, if you've previously connected to it from a iPod or iPhone or uh, iPad, then it will actually pair it to that device and you cannot connect to it from another device. So if that's happened, you need to open it up and there's a reset button you're gonna to wanna to hit to reset it and remove the pairing. Okay, so once you've done that, then we're gonna go ahead and go into our drone app here. Not much UI, because I just wanted to uh, test it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit launch. Move this over here so you can see my finger at the same time as the AR drone. You see there's the AR drone's taking off, and it's running. That's not going to do it.
so ah, it's going the wrong way. All right, so I haven't figured out exactly my controls yet, but you can see it is moving around, and I am controlling it here from my uh, from my app. Um, it unfortunately bumped into the wall, so it's not flying very straight. So I'll go ahead and land it. Land. And there we go, it's landed. So there we go. Not very successfully, but flying the AR drone with my uh, app written in Delphi XE5.